In today's video, we'll be looking at the uniqueness of our blood group. In case you're tuning in for the first time, in this channel, we'll talk about how our blood group influences everything about our life besides other health insights. So you want to join us in this journey of discovering the missing link in your health? Then hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Don't also forget to click on the like buttons. Blood. When the word blood hits, what comes to your mind? That red substance that moves in the body. Yes, but much more than that. Blood is that red liquid that carries oxygen along with special protein called antigens around the body. These antigens are actually what determines your blood type. If your antigen is A, your blood type is A. If your antigen is B, your blood type is B. If, you're, if you have both A and B antigen on the surface of your red blood cell, your blood group is AB. But if you don't have any antigen on your red blood cells, your blood group is O. O means zero antigen. And that is why blood O are regarded as general donor because they don't have any antigen on the surface of the red blood cell. So they can give to any other blood without any agglutination occurring. Next thing we talk about is antibodies. Where are these antibodies found? Beside red blood cell, the blood also contains a colorless part called plasma. This plasma carries a, a protective protein called antibodies. These antibodies, along with white blood cell, determines in the immune system of an individual. For blood group A, the antigen antibody will be B. Why? Because antibody and, and, and antigens must be of opposites to avoid agglutination. When similar blood group, that is antigen and antibody meets, they agglutinate. It means that that antibody is going to attack that blood group. That's that antigen causing agglutination, which is clumping. And that what causes death during blood transfusion. So for blood group A, which is antigen A, the antibody is B. For blood group B, the antibody is A. For blood group AB, the anti antibody is zero. It does not have any antibody because if any if it has a, because it has both A and B antigen, if it has any antibody, it's going to agglutinate, it's going to react with this A B antigen. Why blood group O that does not have any antigen? have antibody A and B. That's why they can donate. And A, B does not have antibody. That's why they can receive from every other. The next thing we need to talk about is the resource factor. Resource factor, in this, on the surface of this red blood cell, we have an antigen called D antigen. This D antigen can be positive or negative. When it's positive, it means it is available on the surface of the red, red blood cell. And that's why we say this blood group is O positive. O is antigen, then the anti D antigen on that antigen is positive or negative. That's the resource factor. What's the implication? Now, in life, they say negative is bad, but in blood group, negative is regarded as very important because re negative resource can give blood to anybody, both positive and negative, without any agglutination. While positive can only give to positive and cannot give to negative. Good. Apart from this benefit of resource negative, there's another side effect of resource negative, which is resource disease. What is resource disease? This is an incompatibility between negative resource of a mother and positive resource of a of an unborn child. So when this incompatibility happens, this neg resource negative of the mother will destroy the red blood cells of this unborn child, causing heart failure liver failure, anemia, and even jaundice and brain damage. To the mother, if injection was not given after delivery, she will end up not having any other child. And that is why at this junction, if you don't know your blood group or the blood group of your children, I advise you to go and do the netphone. Because blood group is just like your identity, it's your genetic identity. Now, you're supposed to know it the way you know your name. 
some people when i was asking them about their blood type some of them said ah i know i've done the test but i don't really know it offhand which is very bad in case of emergency and you don't know your blood type some people were even guessing if it's a, a matter of emergency and you're guessing you are endangering your life because the doctor will take the information you've given him to do blood transfusion for you you end up losing your life Please, to avoid all these unnecessary deaths due to our carelessness, let's go and know our blood group and know it as we know our names. Also, guide your children, identify their blood group. If there is anyone that has resource negative, guide the person very well, especially during marriage, most especially for females. Now, after talking about the scientific aspect of this blood, we'll talk about the nutritional aspect how does this blood affect my health yes remember life is in the blood how why do they say that one man's meat is another man's poison and another saying that says you are what we eat now from ancestry blood all are meat hunters by meat hunters is that this blood group O are the oldest blood group that existed from the origin man we are hunters so they feed on animals. Meat is their major food. But when population started increasing, they are, they, they are, there was competition over food. Due to that competition over food and meat, they started migrating in order to survive. They migrated to Europe. So when they got to Europe, there was not as much food as there was in Africa. I mean, as much meat because their food was meat. So they started to experiment on trees, on plants, on fruits. They would just pick these fruits. Wow, plum is nice, pest nice, berries are nice. They say, wow, so there's an alternative means of survival. So they started, so they digressed from meat to agriculture. They started cultivating. So that's what brought about blood group A. A blood group are vegetarian. So more, di more migration continued and they migrated to Asia and US. When they got there, they maintained a balance between meat and vegetable. That's what brought about blood B. Blood B is a, they are neither vegetarian nor meat hunter. So they, they maintained a balance. A time came when desperate men, desperate people started to intermingle. They started to intermarry. That brought about the rarest of the blood group called AB. This blood group AB, their diets are uh, more of A, and partly B. Now, statistics have it that the most blood group O are mainly Africans. If you look around, you anybody you see, you ask, they will tell you that their blood group are O. That's the people that know their blood group. Now, secondly, is by A. From statistics, we found out that forty-five percent of the populace are blood O. Among that O, we have O positive to be 35 while all negative are about 18 percent but a has about 38 we are positive at 30 negative at 8 percent a b have two percent they are very rarest why one percent of them are negative why blood b have about eight percent and two percent to be negative so if you don't have know your blood group now, before we go further on our blood group diet, I encourage you to go and do the needful. This will help you to discover why you react to some things and other things are good for you. Remember, you are what you eat. You want to live long, eat well. Let me tell us a scenario of what happens. When you see a stranger in your house, what do you do? You react. You look a means of defending yourself. So that's what happens when you eat a, a food that your blood group is not compatible with. They will react. And that reaction is one we we'll talk about, I am sick. That reaction brings about a feeling of unwell. But when you eat what is compatible with your blood system, you'll be fine. You will live long. You don't stress your system. I hope we'll go and do the needful. Join me in the next video as you discover why you should eat some fruits and not eat other fruits. Thank you.